What would happen to the Injustice universe if somebody within Superman's family was able to actually stop him? Today we're going to explore a storyline of John Kent going to the Injustice universe. And I won't really spoil about what happens to bring him there in general, but today we're going to follow John Kent Superman as he's offered an opportunity to go into the multiverse and help stop problems. And that gets him to the Injustice universe where we see his reaction to his multiversal father becoming a dictator. This is Comic Story, and nearly daily we bring you comic book videos keeping you up to date as to what is going on in the world of comics, turning them into audio dramas. If you enjoy this, go check it out at your local comic book store. But today we're going to be covering John Kent Superman Road to Injustice, issues 1 through 6. Let's cover that full story. Somewhere across the multiverse, a Superman hears a voice calling out to him, asking if he'll be running. Superman says that he will not be running, and the voice tells him, Of course not. They never run. Seconds later, Ultraman comes crashing down upon this Superman. And as the smoke clears, Ultraman grabs Superman by the neck, telling him, Say it! Say your last words! Superman struggles at first, but manages to say, Lois! And Ultraman laughs. There it is. It's always the same. Now burn! Ultraman's heat vision engulfs Superman and turns him to ash. Ultraman turns, walking through a portal, telling him, That's done. On to the next one. Meanwhile, over at Earth Zero, Jonathan Kent walks around Metropolis. This is weird. I can walk through the city and not have eyes stare at me. No phones pointing my way, not having to block out the words being whispered about my identity. As much as I hate what Lex Luthor has done, this is amazing. This is about as free as I can get. Jay shifts in his coat and scarf, telling him that he's very happy for him. It must be nice to have a proper secret identity. Whereas his identity is the guy who wears hats in a lot of layers. But he's glad that John can get some privacy. And that he can live with everyone knowing that Jay Nakamura is Superman's boyfriend. Just then, Jay looks up telling him, Would you look at that? A shooting star. Maybe you can wish for my secret identity back. As John looks at it, he tells Jay, That's not a shooting star. John begins to change, and Jay tells him it's fine, no one's around. This is clearly a job for Superman. John quickly flies up, reaching out to Oracle, telling her to call in the Titans. It seems the sky is falling. Oracle says that she just got the reports from Lord Industries. Their entire near-Earth communication system has been hacked. What they are seeing is over a thousand satellites falling out of the sky. John looks around. I can see them everywhere, all across the planet. I'd say we have about five minutes until they all crash land, Oracle. The Titans help where they can, but John races around, taking out a majority of the falling satellites. And suddenly, he begins to feel something. It's like the world has stopped, and there's a change inside of him. He has felt this building up before, during the Lazarus Planet event. This power. But just like that, it's gone. Oracle tells him that the satellites over Asia are disappearing, and it looks like something is taking them out and vaporizing them before they can reach the ground. It's moving too fast for her to see. So John takes out more satellites on his way towards Asia. And when he gets there, he suddenly stops when he sees what is waiting for him. Another Superman. The new Superman floats down to the ground. Hey, we knew that you'd have it, but I was already here, so... This Superman dusts his hands off, telling him, John, it's good to finally meet you. I'm Superman, but my name is Val Zod. John holds out his hand. Zod? Val tells him, yeah, of course. That might be problematic for you, but perhaps before too many people gather, we should take this to the sky. Moments later, after flying over the planet, Val tells him that he appreciates him talking instead of jumping to conclusions. John says that he really isn't the lashing out without provocation type of person. Plus, he helps save two continents. Val laughs. laughs. Yeah, well, this might sound strange, but I'm from a different universe. However, there is someone here on this planet that can back me up on what I'm about to say, and they'll be meeting me shortly. So moments later, everyone flies to John's home. Val Zod flies down, giving Mr. Terrific a hug, and Terrific says, Welcome to Earth, Val Zod. Any idea what happened to the satellites? I suspect corporate sabotage. Do you have a Luther here? John says that Luther is in jail at the moment, and Lois says that that wouldn't stop Luther. While she may be used to taking strange things in stride, anyone care to explain what is even going on? Val looks at Mr. Terrific, and he says that this is Val Zod and Red Tornado from Earth 2. They are friends that he met on another Earth when he visited them. 
Lois then offers everyone to come inside if they have a story to tell. So Val quickly begins to lay it out. The Supermen of the multiverse are in danger. Kal-El's across the multiverse are being murdered by a twisted Kryptonian named Ultraman. John's face turns to anger. Yeah, I know that name. Ultraman trapped me in a volcano a very long time ago. Took years away from my life. Years that I should have spent with my parents. Lois asks what does Valzad and Red Tornado want with John, and Red Tornado explains that they want him to come with them. Possible that with his help, they may be able to actually stop Ultraman. Lois yells at her. Are you saying the man that tortured my son? You want him to help you with what? Red Tornado explains that Ultraman has a device that is specifically tuned to Kal-El's. It weakens them to a cellular level, and he will come and he will kill her husband, and the grief of that will almost destroy her. Trust them on that. Val then says that once the Kal-El's fall, it's not long after that the world falls. Red Tornado says that they have experienced it. They lost her Earth and more. She wasn't always this. She lost her life. She lost her Kal-El. She lost Clark. Lois stares for a moment and wonders, who are you? And Red Tornado explains that at one point, her name was Lois Lane. And they need John's help. A thousand champions on a thousand Earths are in danger. A thousand Clark Kents, including her own, will die. Knowing what Ultraman has done to them, they wouldn't have come if it wasn't so important. So please, John, step into the multiverse and face your monster. Later at the Fortress of Solitude, Jay says that this sucks, and Lois says that it does suck. It's the hardest part of all of this. Letting them go and realizing that they aren't just theirs. Jay asks if she has any advice, and Lois tells him that when Clark is away, she has her own crusades that she leads, usually overworks herself to the point of burnout. Jay laughs. <laughs> that sounds healthy. She says she does have one bit of advice, though. Make John promise that he'll come back, because Superman never breaks a promise. Seconds later, John returns to the others, telling them. All right, I have it, but uh, what is Red Tornado doing? Val says that she is currently searching the multiverse for Ultraman. Some of Mr. Terrific's quantum tech is installed in her, and she's now attuned to the multiverse, which helps them find where Ultraman is. Val looks at John, asking what he's holding. He explains that it's the Phantom Zone projector. He had to snap a lock made from a neutron star to get it. Dad is not going to be happy. Red Tornado says that Ultraman just jumped. Another Clark is dead. They have to go now. So John says his goodbyes to his mother who gives him a small crystal stating that if he ever needs it, just listen to the message on it and gives her a hug. Jay then says that he's going to fight the guy who tortured him and imprisoned him. You superheroes are so messed up. Be sure to bring back the weirdest postcard you can find. Red Tornado says that it's time to go and Jay pulls John back, making him promise to come back home. John tells him that he promises. The three step into the portal and they begin to search. And John asks, why did they come for him? Wasn't there any other John that they could have gone to? Val tells him because time is the same no matter which multiverse they're in. In most universes, the John Kents are still 11 years old. Now there is another John his age, but his universe is infested with the undead and he seems a little busy. But at that moment as he's trying to explain the deceased universe, Red Tornado sees Ultraman and declares that he's coming. Before she could finish, Ultraman rockets through, ripping Red Tornado apart, sending her pieces falling back to the Earth. Val hurries to try and catch what he can of her, but as John looks back to where Ultraman went, he flies through, delivering another punch that sends him to the ground, dropping the projector. He flies down and looks at it. What do we have here? Across from him, Val picks up the torso of Red Tornado. He asks how she is, and she tells him not to worry. Deal with Ultraman! But from the smoke, Ultraman stands with the projector, asking, You're going to deal with me? I warned you what would happen if you kept showing up. John begins to crawl out of the crater that Ultraman launched him into, and as he does, he sees Ultraman powering up the projector, aiming it directly at Valzod and Red Tornado. He tries to jump in to save them, but the projector hits them, with Valzod's last words being, Don't let him win, John. The two fade away, and Ultraman pauses for a moment. John? Are you my John? John turns back with rage. I was never your John! He hits Ultraman with his heat vision, and as that fades, Ultraman laughs. Wow, banishing your robot mom to limbo really ticked you off, huh? But you won't be using the projector to save them. He rushes forward unscathed by the attack, grabbing John by the throat. You're still holding back, because you have the same weakness as your father. 
COMPASSION! He releases a flurry of attacks telling him, You will never be able to defeat me if you're not prepared to kill. John tells him that he's wrong. And at that moment, John feels a power growing in him. The power from before, like lightning on his fingertips. Rage building up inside, taking a hold. It's something that he's been holding back, but this time he doesn't. He lets it out. He unleashes that rage and strength into a single punch that could stop even Superman, launching Ultraman downward. He follows up with another hit, propelling him further. I can't think of anything weaker than only caring about yourself, practically invulnerable, but you're still ruled by fear. Only that power, and absolutely no strength. But just before he can finish Ultraman, he feels the power fading. Whatever it was, it is leaving him, like he used up every reserve that he had. He nearly passes out, and Ultraman groans getting up. That was the hardest anyone's ever hit me. And I've pissed off a lot of powerful people. I'm not sure what that power is, but it's taken a lot out of you, huh? You weren't ready. You didn't know how to deal with it. And now you won't even get a chance to learn. I'm not going to kill you. I'm going to throw you back in that volcano and keep you to play with. Normally, I wouldn't even bother with the Loises, but for you, I'm going to make an exception. I'm going to make sure that your Lois suffers. But at that moment, there's a rush of wind and a voice telling him, No, you won't. Before Ultraman could react, his neck is snapped by Superman. Ultraman's lifeless body falls to the ground and John looks up. You... You killed him! But this Superman looks back and stares at John. Great Rao, you have your mother's eyes. Later, after returning to the Hall of Justice following the death of Ultraman, John wakes up on the examination table, being looked over by a man that he would never thought would be helping him, Lex Luthor. John immediately jumps to his feet, telling Lex to stand back, but Lex tells him that he's going to take a wild guess, that in his world, they aren't close. Nevertheless, there is nothing for John to fear. There is, however, something that he'd like to mention. During his most recent fight, it looks like John got overloaded. John asks what does he mean, and Lex explains that his body is essentially a solar battery. His body found a way to use all of the energy that he stored in one go. It can put out an immense amount of power, but it also takes a lot out of him. Perhaps with time and training, he might be able to better control it, maybe even surpass there, Superman. Lex asks what should he call him, and John tells him his name. Lex quickly puts it together that he was named after Clark's father. John Kent of this world was a good friend, and you couldn't have been named after a finer man. But something that you should know, this world's Clark Kent has... He has suffered through unspeakable tragedy, trying his best, but... Before he could finish, Lex enters, asking if John is awake. Lex quickly changes topics, telling him that he is awake and he's going to be fine. Clark, meet John. Superman looks at the symbol on his son from another universe's uniform and he asks, John, if we had had a boy, that's what we would have named him. John takes his costume, telling him, You killed Ultraman. I did. I didn't want to, but after I had lost you and your mother, I wasn't going to let a man like that. Lex stops them both. What did Ultraman want? John explains that Ultraman was traveling the multiverse, killing Kal-El's across the multiverse. So John came here to stop him. That he wasn't alone. That he's Superman from another universe and an android. Well, Ultraman sent them to the Phantom Zone. Superman puts his hand on John's shoulder, telling him that he's sorry. We're going to get them back. Together. But before they could come up with a plan, an alarm goes off and the Flash runs in. He explains that there are attacks on two barracks, one in Gotham and one in Star City. They should probably take the Star City one since Damien and his team are already on the scene in Gotham. As Superman and Wonder Woman get ready to leave and John follows, he tells them that he wants to help. Superman turns back with a very strong no, but he catches himself at how harsh his tone was. I'm sorry, just stay here. Be safe. We'll be back soon. Moments later, over in the regime barracks in Gotham, Damien finds himself assisting some of his team from an attack trying to determine the source. However, as everyone begins to wonder, Damien already knows what foe they're facing, calling out how his father should show himself. As Batman steps out, Damien says, Those men that you're so keen on knocking out, they have families! Batman yells at him, Family is not a protection! They chose to serve a corrupted ruler, just as you did! Damien screams as he's about to attack when suddenly John flies in, stopping him. Hey, I'm new here, but can we talk about what's happening? 
Damien just looks at him. Who the hell are you? But Batman's the one that figures it out. I know who he is. I don't know how he's here, but I know who you are. Damien then lifts John up, throwing him over his head. But before John could get an answer as to why Damien is so strong, Batman tells him that he blundered his way into something that he doesn't understand. Before there could be any more talking, Damien lunges in, knocking Batman into the next room. Damien then goes to follow up, but John stops him, asking him, what is going on? And Damien shakes him off, shouting, get off of me! We can't let him get away! However, as Damien goes to follow, Batman has already escaped, just as Superman and the others arrive. Once things have settled, Damien looks at John, telling him, do not get in my way again. And John is just confused. What is even going on? Superman proceeds to tell him that there was a tragic accident. In this universe, Dick Grayson died and Bruce blamed Damien. Damien blames himself as well, but his father cast him out. But it's time we talk about what happened. As the two fly up into the atmosphere, Superman explains that his mother was taken from him. They were supposed to have a child and he reacted poorly to it all. He was lost. But in time, a new resolve grew from his grief. He decided to do more for the world, to make the world less tragic. They began to reverse climate crisis. They've helped overthrow dictators. They've stopped idiotic wars over beliefs in meaningless borders. He is creating one Earth. John says that he once asked his father why he didn't do more. And Superman explains that if they were alike, then you'd have to say that his father thought it wasn't his place, but it was just an excuse. Once he accepted that he belonged, that he was a worthy citizen of this world, he knew that he had to use his power to help it. As the two begin to come back down, John says that he would like to see this world, and Superman says to him that he would love to show him. But John stops him. I'd like to go alone if I can. As John takes off, Wonder Woman tells Superman that she thinks it was a bad idea. And Superman asks her, What would you have me do? Keep him locked in the tower? I'm not going to imprison my child. But Wonder Woman stops him there. He is not your child. Your child died. John flies across the globe listening, but he hears nothing but silence. No bombs or gunfire. It's just all so quiet. That's when he hears a woman screaming and he rushes over to the source, catching a baby falling out of a window. As he catches the child, he says that they'll find the apartment that he fell out of and make sure that it doesn't happen again. Once he does, the woman runs over ecstatic and then opens her eyes, seeing the symbol on John's chest and terror begins to set in. John realizes her eyes are full of fear, but he also realizes it wasn't over him, it was over the symbol. John takes a moment to think again, and he realizes, this world isn't quiet because it's peaceful. It's quiet because it's not free. Everyone is holding their breath because everyone is afraid to make a noise. That's when Superman arrives asking, almost pleading, begging his son to understand. You see it, right? You notice the difference that we've made? After returning to the Hall of Justice, having seen a lot of the world under Superman's regime, John is told that the Justice League must now head back out to handle some business on the moon of Titan. Superman tells John that this time he understands the want to help, but he must stay here. He'll have everything that he'll need. As everyone leaves, John lingers around outside the watchtower, and he notices Lex Luthor suddenly leaving once the coast is clear. Later, at the Insurgency Underground Base, Batman's home base, Lex pulls up, carting out the body of Ultraman. And Batman asks, where is Superman? Lex says that he is investigating something with the others, but they only have a limited amount of time. Harley jumps up, asking what did he bring? And when she sees the body of Ultraman, she says that she's been given one of those before, and no matter how nicely they're wrapped up, bodies are always a disappointment. Lex goes on to explain that Ultraman came here to kill Clark, which means that he came with a strategy, and he may have found what Ultraman's plan was. He peels back part of Ultraman's symbols, stating that the power to hurt Superman was within his suit. It is possible that there is something within this suit that will target Clark on a microscopic level, leeching his power. This could be the answer that they're after. At that moment, John flies in. So it seems like the Lex of this world is the same as mine. Another born liar obsessed with tearing down Superman. Everyone looks back and realizes who just flew in. Batman looks at him. Do not let him leave. And John asks, do you honestly think you can stop me? Everyone begins to jump in and John quickly sees that these people aren't normal humans anymore. 
Something is making them all a lot stronger. Before John has a chance to react to most of the swings, Batman grabs him, flips him on his back, slamming him onto the ground. John looks around asking what is happening. Why are you all so strong? And just as Lex tells Batman to wait, Batman delivers a ground shaking punch to John's face. Everyone else is holding John down and they begin to feel something going on. Harley's the one to ask. Uh, Batman, this kid is giving an ominous glow in a way that kids really shouldn't be giving off one. As rage begins to build up in John, he says that it looks like Batman judges people instead of hearing them out in every universe. Now get off of me. He begins to use his new powers, blasting everyone away. And as Batgirl jumps in, John hesitates. Babs, stop. Batgirl is stunned. Wait, you know me? Yeah, in, in my world, Nightwing is my mentor and we're both friends and you and Dick, you're happy together. You even have a puppy called Batwing. John turns to everyone. I don't want to hurt you, not even Batman. I just want to understand what's going on here and how I can help. Soon another voice joins. That's very good to hear. Why don't we all take a moment to calm down? As Alfred serves everyone drinks, he says that he knows violence has its place, but he finds that a cup of tea in a discussion can often achieve more than fisticuffs. Lex walks up declaring that he knows that this looks bad. And John tells him, it looks like you're planning to take down Superman by stealing technology from a corpse. All right, well, I hadn't fully considered how bad this actually looks. But I promise, I was a great friend of Clark's before the fall. I have tried to steer him away from the path that he is on many times. And I have remained by his side as an attempt to limit the damage that he may cause. We could use your help. John asks, wait, you want me to fight against my father? He is not your father. Clark murdered his child. But it's Catwoman who jumps in with the voice of reason. Let's not represent what happened. The Joker drugged and tricked Superman into killing Lois. John stands up. I'm gonna bet that his friend Bruce Wayne was a beacon of compassion and support when that happened, right? Batman tells him whatever problem he clearly has with his Batman is not the problem that he has with this Batman. Harley jumps up. You literally just punched him in the face. Look, I know about Dick Grayson. Did you push Damien away when he needed you, Batman? Batman gruffly doesn't respond, grimacing back at him. That's what I thought, because Superman was right about that, at least. He then looks back, telling Lex, I won't say anything about this to my dad, I, I mean Kal-El. Don't worry. There's two sides to every argument, and I'm hearing them all out. You have Alfred and Batgirl, which tells me almost everything I need to know. But I'm not leaping into a fight without investigating more. So later, John returns to the Hall of Justice, and it's Damien that calls him out asking, where have you been? What, am I not free to move around anymore? Superman may believe in you, but I don't. No, you've never been trusting. You don't know me! Oh, but I do, Damien. I know you hated it when Alfred used to cut your hair and left it too long. I know you eat frosted tarts and Ovaltine for breakfast. I know how much you love to Dick Grayson and what losing your brother could do to you. And I know that you would never intentionally hurt him. I know all of this because we're best friends. Damien grabs him. We're not best friends here. And if you do anything to hurt Superman, I'll carve out your spleen with a kryptonite spoon. What John didn't notice is that Damien got close to him so that he could place a tracker on his back. So Damien leaves and John takes to the skies trying to think about who he could talk to. Who might be a voice of reason, something outside of this conflict, not on either side of the battle, the insurgency or the regime. And he knows of one person and he hopes that they still exist in this universe. Over in a city, Jay Nakamura hears tapping on his window. And as he opens it, John floats there. Look, you don't know me, but we're close in my universe. Sure, that's a normal thing to hear from a guy flying outside of my window. 30 minutes later, after a bit of an explanation, Jay laughs. <laughs> it's every bit as bad as you think. Probably worse. Superman is claiming that he's building a utopia, but what he's really doing is turning the planet into a prison. Here, Superman killed Green Arrow and Black Canary. Batman and his resistance are the only people standing up to the regime. Jay pauses for a moment. Why did you come to me? All right, well, this is a little awkward, but... And Jay stops him. We're together in your world, aren't we? John smiles. Yeah. And Jay pumps his fist. Damn! Way to go, alternate universe me! John asks Jay for a hug. And then after that, they get up and John says he has to go. He appreciates Jay taking a moment to talk to him. 
And as John flies off, Jay turns around after hearing a weird noise on his window. He asks if John forgot something, but as soon as he opens it, Damien leaps in. What did you talk about? What did you tell him? As John secretly meets with the resistance, he learns more about what happened five years ago, when the Joker found a way to combine kryptonite with scarecrow gas. And Clark saw something that wasn't there. He thought he was protecting Lois and their child from doomsday. He was trying to save them, and he lost his whole world in the process. As Batman finishes explaining how things changed for the heroes of the world, John folds his arms. He didn't lose his world. It's still here. He faced a terrible tragedy. I can feel for him. But none of that is an excuse for what he has done and what he's become. Now, I could see you doing that, Batman. Not the killing, because of your code. But I could see you overreaching, making sure that everyone on Earth was bulletproof but not Superman. He doesn't get a pass because he's grieving. He needs to still be held accountable. Everyone goes quiet when they look at John as he asks, what's wrong? Batgirl tells him, hearing you talk like that. John stops her. I sound like him before all of us, don't I? But Catwoman stops him. No, you sound like Lois. Clark fought for truth, but Lois lived it. Harley then takes her turn to speak up, telling him that she knows this is going to sound weird since she, uh, she had a hand in killing his mother and him, sort of, but she just wanted to say she's sorry. John asks her, for what? Murdering me? Y yeah, I, I just, I, I didn't think. It was Superman, you know? He always finds a way. I just thought it was a game. I, I didn't think the Joker would win. John glares at her. You stood beside the Joker. What are you after? Forgiveness? Well, that's not happening. You helped a monster, and you're gonna have to live with that. But while you're living with it, do better. Be better. Make a difference. Help. It's the only chance you get to make things right. Meanwhile, over at the Hall of Justice, Superman looks down at the captured Jay Nakamura, asking, What is the meaning of this, Damien? This is Jay. John is really close to him in his world. You are drastically overstepping, Damien. Release him. No, you're the one being blinded by John's face. You don't realize how dangerous this is. Superman pauses. He looks Damien up and down. Are you jealous? There's no reason for you to be. Why the hell wouldn't I be? You only met him yesterday, and you stood by him from the start. Superman stops him again. You don't have to worry about John. He isn't a threat. So then why don't we go ask John then? Oh wait, we can't because he's not here. But it doesn't matter. I slipped a tracker onto John's suit when he wasn't looking. Damien brings Superman into the operations room, pointing at the screen, telling him, there, he's outside of Gotham. Superman looks at the monitor. There's nothing there. Exactly. No structure. He has no reason to be there. We should gather the League and... No. We wait until John leaves. Then we strike. Back in the underground bunker. Batgirl asks, does this mean that John is with them? John tells her that he spoke with a friend and they've explained what's been happening. He is with Batman and the Resistance, but he isn't sure what that even means yet. He doesn't want to fight Superman. Really, he doesn't want to hurt anyone. You may not have a choice, Batman tells him. And Batgirl chimes in. Why don't you use Ultraman's weapon then? We could drain Superman's power. And Catwoman wants to know what about the rest of the League. So Batman holds up a pill. We have what we need to stand up against them. Sure, we have super pills, which are good for not exploding when getting hit by Wonder Woman. But what if we get thrown into space? Batman goes on. I can draw Superman out. I'll find a way to ensure that he's alone, or at least divide up the League so that they're easier to pick off. We'll start tomorrow. For now, we prepare, we rest. Batgirl tells him that they shouldn't let Superman grow suspicious, so John agrees he should probably head back. But first he has to check on a message someone left for him. But it's after an hour of John leaving that the Resistance has begun to make their preparations for their fight, when their alarms suddenly go off. Batgirl checks the computer. I got a message from Luther. He's coming. Superman is 
But before she could finish, there's an explosion that rocks everyone to the ground. Superman and the rest of the League descend in. Hello, Bruce. Bruce demands that everyone take their pills, but as he reaches for his, Superman uses his heat vision to destroy the bottle. No. Catwoman lunges at Superman, and without him even reacting, Wonder Woman defends him by delivering a powerful hit with a loud echoing crack to Selina's head. Superman then flies over, grabbing Batman by the neck as he's in shock that Selina was just dropped. And as he struggles for air, he asks, How? Superman tells him it's because of John. John led them there. I don't believe you. It's true, father. He led us right to you. He just didn't know. I set him up. Aren't you proud? But back with John, he enters the Crystal Fortress where he intends to play the crystal message that Lois gave him before embarking on his journey. He puts the crystal in and the image of Lois appears. She starts off stating that she is sorry for what he had to go through for all the trauma he had to face head on with Ultraman. She wishes that she could be there to look after him, but she knows that he has to do this alone. Even after what Ultraman did, it would be easy for him to hate, but she knows, even now, he doesn't hate him. It's remarkable. He has chosen to confront his greatest fears to help strangers, and that's what makes him a Superman. As the message finishes, a voice says how they miss Lois. John turns back seeing the Jonathan and Martha Kent of this world confined to the Fortress of Solitude, who seem just as surprised to see him as he is to see them. They apologize. It's just, we wouldn't be the first time that we spoke to a Superman outside of our timeline. As Superman's parents, we have had to take on some very strange things. John says that he imagines raising an alien who fell out of the sky was good preparation for that. Martha asks, are you related to Clark? He tells them yes, but not their Clark. But yes, his name is John. Jonathan shakes his hand. Good name. John explains that he was named after him. He was named after his grandfather. So Martha asks if he's their son, the one that they lost. John explains that he is the son of Lois and Clark, but he doesn't know who would have been born into this universe. But really, why are his grandparents here, away from everything in the Fortress of Solitude? Martha says that Clark is keeping them here for safety. John asks, you've been locked in a fortress for your own protection? I'm sensing a theme. My boy is hurt, he's lost, and we can't reach him. I wanna help him, but I also wanna help your worlds too. I may have to stop your son to do it. Martha gives him a weak smile. If you can help steer Clark from the path that he's on, you would be helping him. At that moment, a transmission begins to play with Superman making a broadcast to the entire world. I would like to announce that the terrorist threat known as Batman has been captured, along with his insurgent unit. Tomorrow morning, Selina Kyle and Barbara Gordon will be imprisoned for their part in the insurgency that threatened the whole world. Bruce Wayne and Harleen Quinzel will be executed for their many crimes against humanity. The time of terror has come to an end. As Batman is taken away, he shouts out, John will stop you. No, he won't. I assure you, John will, because he's Superman, and that still means something to him. He's your son, with all of your morals. It took less than 48 hours for him to decide to stand against you. Harleen then says, maybe that's something you can take away from. And Superman grabs her by the face, yelling, after everything that you've done, after everything that you took from me, you think you get to advise, to analyze, to even speak. After tomorrow, you will never open that damned mouth again. As people in news stations began to gather around to watch the public execution of Superman's biggest threats, his regime was standing beside him. Cyborg tells Superman that he has some worries about John stopping what they're doing. Superman is sure that John won't interfere. He is Superman's son, after all, even if he is from another universe. But Cyborg says that if John does, you won't have to fight him. After going through Luther's scans of John, I was able to determine what universe he came from. And I'm currently working on something that can send John back to his own universe. Superman tells him that John will see the good that they've done. But Wonder Woman shares the concerns of Cyborg that Superman's judgment might be clouded. Just in case, be at the ready. John, however, has already prepared for his coming battle. 
or at least the battle that he may be able to avoid. He realizes that he has to deal with more than Superman. He has to fight the entire Justice League, and he needs to fully tap into this blue power that he has discovered that he has in order to stop the regime. Luther told him that he originally used all of his energy fighting Ultraman. And to have what he needs for this battle, he's going to need to store more energy so that he can release it. Up in space, John can see the members of Superman's regime scattered across the globe looking for him. So in order to do this, he must start with the most dangerous. He flies back to the Earth and stops at the one man who isn't used to stomping, the Flash. He asks him one simple question. Superman is going to publicly execute people in the morning. Do you fully believe in what he's doing? The Flash begins to speak, but there is a single moment of hesitation. Yeah, that's what I thought. Hey, I didn't get to answer. You don't have to. I heard your heart skip. I'm going to save Batman and Harley, and you can stop me. But I'm asking for you to just sit this one out, Flash. The two then discuss the situation for what would be ours for other people. They share thoughts, ideas, and John makes promises and the Flash accepts them. The Flash isn't a bad person, he's just trying to not abandon a friend who has made some terrible mistakes. In the end, the Flash turns to leave, but he stops. If you hurt Clark, I'll catch up to you. John nods. I understand. Thank you. Next up is Hawk Girl. John quickly removes her wings, making her just girl. But John does make sure that she safely lands and without her calms. After that, it's Hal Jordan's yellow lantern ring, his yellow light burning above Gamora. But Jay Nakamura isn't there. The individual that John sought out to get advice from, the individual that he spends a lot of his time with on his world. And now that he's taking the ring off, Hal Jordan looks scared. Next up is time for the one that John was most afraid of, Wonder Woman. He can't hold back what he faces her and he has to use everything that he has. She has the power of Hermes, the god of speed, but he is faster. She begins to react as they're passing Jupiter. He is moving quicker than he ever has before, faster than any ancient deities. He's stronger than he's ever been, but she is still Diana, Princess of Themyscira, and she still manages to attack him as they reach Titan. She tells him that he could have been so much to Kal-El. He could have been some of the love that Kal-El had lost, and she will bury the disappointment that is John in this moon's dust. John quietly tells himself, Wow, you are not the person that you should be. But John already knows that he isn't going to fight her. He just needs something of hers. Back down on Earth in Gotham, John makes one last visit before the final showdown. He visits Damien. And John is the one who sneaks up on him. Don't pretend you knew that I was coming. I've been practicing this for years. Not for any nefarious reasons, just as a bit of retaliation. What do you want? John holds out Wonder Woman's lasso. Where I'm from, Wonder Woman is the ambassador of peace. Whoever I ended up with is definitely not Wonder Woman. There's a lot in this world that seems salvageable. While I'm holding this, I want you to know that I believe in you. That you can be one of the greatest heroes on the planet, and you just need to believe that as well. But what I wanted to ask is, do you truly want Bruce Wayne to die? Damien takes the lasso, and he pauses for a moment. No, I don't. Yeah, that's what I figured. In my world, you lost Alfred. You should talk to yours. His approval is what matters. You don't need the validation of a dictator. You're stronger than that. But before long, Superman begins to check in with everyone, and as he gets no answers from most, Jay Nakamura, from his cell, asks if the soldiers are answering. Sounds like your son might have gotten to them. Superman glares. You poisoned him. What? I didn't poison him. Maybe you're just toxic, and John didn't need his super eyes to see that. Superman bends to the bars, grabbing Jay, when there's a suddenly karoom! As John bursts through the wall asking Superman, Do you care to take this outside? With all the people still awaiting execution, John looks at him. You've got quite the crowd. They're here to see Batman and Quinzel finally dealt with. Yeah, that's going to be hard to do. Superman looks back and doesn't hear anything. You broke them out. You have no idea what you've done. I stopped a public execution. I'm not overthinking it. You have been here for five minutes, and you think that you can judge me? Do you have any idea what I've lost? What I've done to protect this planet? Superman holds up Jay. If this man died in my hands, what would you do? 
John looks at him. I would do whatever it takes to ensure that you face justice. And no more. Do you really think that? Do you think you're stronger than anger? Stronger than grief? Superman has to be, John tells him. Suddenly there's a crack as Superman breaks Jay's arm. Then we should test that! John begins to channel all of his energy that he has stored up while in space. Show me! Do your worst! Show the world! John begins to run at his top speed. He goes faster than he ever has before. Faster than Superman. Stronger. He won't be able to do it for long, but he can do it long enough. As he moves forward, he extends his arms and he hugs Superman. I'm sorry for what has happened to you, but it doesn't excuse anything that you've done. You have to face justice. No matter how powerful, no matter how much influence you hold, powerful people must also be held accountable. This world has to have the same laws for everyone. As John's power fades, Superman hits him with a booming backhand, telling him, Fight me, you sanctimonious child! I won't give you what you want. No matter how much you want it, I won't fight you. Why? Why? Because you're Superman. And what I'm looking at is definitely not Superman. There's no way you could be my father. John looks back at the crowd of people. There's something wrong with this universe. You all need to know that Superman doesn't kill. Superman doesn't lead with fear and violence. Superman isn't cruel or vengeful. Superman is a friend. Superman helps, always. And if you can't accept the truth from me, then perhaps there's someone else that you need to hear it from. John begins to pull out a recording and he plays it. It's the recording that Lois gave him before leaving. She informs him of how proud she is of him for making the hard decision to endure it all and still be compassionate. And that is his greatest power. Superman watches and he listens. And just as it seems Lois' words are beginning to have an effect on him, there's another loud KROOM as John is struck from behind. He looks at himself and he sees himself fading from existence. Behind him, Cyborg stands with a portal gun. It's time for you to go back to where you came from. Superman yells for him not to go. Don't leave me again! I truly hope that you find a better path. That you can reflect on what you've done and you can change. But regardless, Humanity is watching you, kal -El. They've all seen. Some of them will still worship you, but most will see exactly how weak you are, how lost. What you had here is over. As John begins to fade, he reappears in his own Earth, back home, away from that twisted world. He now understands why his father hesitates to do more. It's not because it would be too hard to tackle more of the world's problems. It's because it would be too easy. He floats there above the Hall of Justice, listening. This world is loud. There are screams, shrieks, and howls, and... Wait. There are screams, shrieks, and howls. Something is wrong. Something is very wrong on this planet. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and don't forget to check out our full story channel. It'll be linked down below. More full stories over there, long videos, lots of comic books for you to go check out. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to be a part of this community. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next time right here.